Webster Tarpley has a doctorate of history and economics. He's a best-selling author. We sell all four of his books at Infowars.com. We have a new film out, by the way, made by William Lewis, which is Don't Tread on Me, now available at Infowars.com, about states' rights, 10th Amendment. We need to be part of a tribal gang mentality, but not on race. Bill of Rights, Constitution. Tarpley will be on with us during the weekday show for a full hour this week. I'm going to do this full segment with him, part of the next, and I'm going to jam in David, George, Joe, Ralph, and a few others uh, commenting about how the media, Hollywood, is trying to create racial division uh, between Hispanics, whites, and others of the great game of division. But uh, Robert Rodriguez, the accomplished uh, director, is here in Austin, Texas, and he has made a new film called Machete that basically invokes race war from the trailer. And I've talked to people on his staff about it. I'm going to reach out to him this week. I don't want you to be hateful, but especially Hispanics uh, that want to uh, let him know what they think about what he's doing and, and how this may cause a backlash against Hispanics. The number is 512. It's good to call them today and tomorrow when they're there. 512-334-7777. That's 512-334-7777. Or fax 512-391-1529. Again, that's fax 512-391-1529. Or if you want to write them a letter, it's 4900 Old Manor Road, Austin, Texas, 78723. Uh, because I don't think he's a bad guy. I, I, I talked to a few film directors I know that know him. I talked to a Hispanic film producer that I'm good friends with, and he said, look, Rodriguez you know, just, just thinks this is a fun exploitation film, uh, but uh, he's being played here. 4900 Old Manor Road, Austin, Texas, 78723. But to also call him tomorrow and, and you know just explain to him what's going on here. That's very, very important. To do. Uh, let's go to Webster Griffin Tarpley because White House doesn't rule out sabotage in Thursday's wild Wall Street plunge. Uh, Tarpley, two years ago, during the last plunge, predicted that by 2010, we would see the stimulus money run out. He's on record. He's in Obama deception and fall of the republic. One film made over a year ago, one six months ago, saying everything has now happened. And so he's here to break down what he thinks happened in the market Thursday with a thousand point drop. And what's happening with Greece, what the IMF and World Bank are doing. Goldman Sachs now in the emails, premeditatedly doing this as a, as a financial bomb. They want to wreck. It, it, it's the false banker economy against the real economy of Main Street. That's the real enemy. And that's why they want us racially divided fighting with each other. Webster, good to have you here with us. Thank you, Alex. How are you? Good. You've got the floor. Break down uh, your intel on the thousand-point plunge and what's happening right now right. globally. First of all, on, on the thousand points in, in ten minutes on uh, on Thursday afternoon, you got to realize that a panic was already there. You had a pre-existing panic, meaning that you had a lot of people dumping assets, and in particular, it's likely that some of the hedge funds, some of the hyenas in this hedge fund hedge fund wolf pack that attacks Greece and others. Uh, people, there are some hedge funds who bet wrong, and they were very likely dumping assets, panicked, distressed sales of assets into an already panicked market. Now, it's made worse by the fact that you've got these new uh, things, at least relatively new. Program trading has been around for 10 or 20 years, but now you've got high-frequency trading and flash trading. And these are computer uh, uh, trading programs that go thousands of times a second, even even more than that. Uh, so you've got somebody dumping assets, and then as this panic is building, you're getting what you already had in 1929. This part is not new. You've got a lot of people who have put in stop-loss orders, and the stop-loss stop orders say, if the stock goes to X, then sell my shares at X. So as you start going through those stop-loss orders, you get a cascading, snowballing effect as it goes down. So you go down to, uh, to 10,000, to uh, 9,900, to 9,800, and wherever it ended up. Then, of course, the plunge protection team comes in. This is the most obvious thing in the world. The PPT, the President's Working Group on Financial Markets, and the way they do it usually is through futures in Chicago, where they buy the futures to updraft the market, right? They keep the price of the future in Chicago above the price of the stock in New York so that the program traders will then sell the future, buy the stock, and then with uh, you know a couple of hundred million 
in Chicago, you can generate billions and billions of buying uh, in New York. So that's what brought it back, if you will. The artificial part of this is the recovery. Uh, and I'm quite sure that within a week or two, we will get down to the same level that we just saw, because that, that's what you see when you've got a, a panicked market, right? It may go down to a certain level, then bounce up halfway, but then it'll be down there again quite soon. So that's a world panic, and I think that's what people should see. This is the second wave of the world economic depression. This is not a business cycle. This is, this is not a recession. This is a breakdown crisis. By the way, I mean, you've written uh, a book on this many years ago. Uh, over two years ago, you predicted that it would start in Greece, go to Portugal, Spain. You're not here whistling Dixie. I mean, I want to just point out Webster Tarpley is one of our chief economic advisors. You know exactly what you're talking about with the bona fides. What you've said has come true because you understand the technical facts at a deep level. Yeah, it's, thank you very much. It's, it's, a, it's a world economic depression and a disintegration. Now, the disintegration is this. We already had the disintegration of some banks, but now you're going to get the disintegration of the euro, a chaotic collapse, something that nobody should want, the chaotic collapse of the European Central Bank. And by the way, this is now mainstream news. You were saying this two years ago. They laugh. Now they're saying in the New York Times the euro may disintegrate tomorrow. Sure. The, the euro could be a matter of uh, just a, I mean, a weeks or months. The, I would also point the British pound, uh, because of the position of the British pound... They're saying like, Britain's next to fall, yeah. That they will be sucked into this maelstrom, this whirlpool of, of bankruptcy and, uh, and hedge fund speculation. The other thing, though, is once you get the British pound going down and the British banks, that also brings down the euro-dollar market. There's a huge mass of trillions of U.S. dollars that have been sitting in London. Yeah, the carry trade, and, 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 and London is now bigger than New York financially. Right, so the, the euro-dollar market, and of course the euro-dollar is just the same as any other dollar when it comes to a market, so you've got this problem of a whole bunch of dollars that are beyond the reach of the U.S. government, and the British regulatory regime is worth some nothing. The other thing is, interbank lending in Europe has now frozen. It has seized up. In other words, when you get a systemic crisis... Banks will not lend to each other, and this it doesn't just mean Banco Santander or Banco de Bilbao of Spain or uh, the various uh, Italian banks. Unicredito is one of the biggest banks in the world, uh, and it's probably reaching up to Deutsche Bank in Germany and Barclays Bank in Britain. Societe Generale certainly in big trouble. BNP Paribas. These are all bank stocks that have lost six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent in the past week, but. If they're seizing up, that means Wall Street is seizing up, too. And we have this emergency conference. You can see how, how scared the European leaders are. The European finance ministers are meeting in Brussels right now, and they're coming up with what they call the defense fund against the wolf pack. The wolf pack would be the hedge funds. But the wolf pack is them. They're all chief members or former heads of the wolf pack. Uh, more or less. But here's the idea. If you wanted to stop this, there are some things you can do. If you're under attack by hedge funds, you ban hedge funds. If the hedge funds are using credit default swaps, you ban those. Okay, uh, we know what they should do, but what are they saying they're going to do? Well, they're going to they're going to come up. They they came up with 150 billion dollars for Greece, and that's now going through. And now they're going to have 645 billion dollars. The it's 500 billion euros basically, so 650 billion U.S. dollars to defend the euro against these hedge funds, hedge fund hyenas and zombies. And this banks. is overnight. I mean, as soon as Greece got the $164 billion or whatever, you say 150 now they need $600 billion. And, of course, I've been reading that more than half this money is coming from the American taxpayer. Well, you can figure that whenever the IMF gets into the act, the IMF board just, just approved $40 billion U.S. dollars for Greece. So the U.S. taxpayer is on the hook for at least... One fifth of that, so call it eight or nine billion, a little bit less than one fifth. Uh, the other thing is, of course, the U.S. has a one hundred billion dollar line of credit to the IMF, so they could start drawing that down. All right, stay uh, there, Webster. The will be on the Webster, I'm going to set you up for a full hour this week if you can do it. We can really give you a lot of time to go over this because you're one of our leading experts. But in the few minutes we've got left on the other side, versus what you think they should do, the sanity, what they are going to do, and what you're predicting is going to happen on the other side of this quick, uh, quick break. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Both these films, The Obama Deception and Fall of the Republic, I had Nightline here a week ago. They've got a Wednesday night piece about these films on Nightline to give you an idea of the effect they've had.
over 50 million downloads online. <laughs> That's got to scare the system. Webster is our big financial expert on these. Everything he said came true. Webster, I want to jam in a few calls here at the end. You're back with us. What, he's back on Tuesday or Thursday with us for an hour? Tuesday for an hour in the last hour of the syndicated weekday show. But in, in the last four minutes I've got with you, you've got the floor, and I'm not trying to brag here. It's just everything you've said has happened exactly as you said it would happen. You always love to warn people with your solutions. We know they're not going to listen to those. We'll have you on <laughs> Tuesday about solutions. Tell us where you see this going. Well, first of all, uh, the bailouts do not work. Austerity does not work, right? Gouging the lifeblood of the Greek people uh, will make no difference at all in this because that doesn't have anything to do with anything. I think you're going to see the chaotic collapse of the euro. You're going to see panic runs on the euro.